Hey guys, Adam here from Dueling Design. I'm just about to do the gear setup in this Dana 44 high pinion. So I had the guys over at 4 by Store send me this uh, master install kit from uh, Revolution Gear and Axle. It comes with all your shims, uh, pinion seals, the pinion nut, all new hardware too actually for the ring gear which is sweet. Comes with the uh, gasket maker, the marking compound, the little brush, all that good stuff. Comes with Timken bearings, made in USA, right on the bearing. Good stuff. Also comes with this nice sticker. And then, uh, since these kits don't normally come with the inner axle seals, the guys at 4 by Store looked up and got me the correct Dana 44 inner axle seals that go here and here. So uh, now we've got everything. All the parts came from 4 by Store. If you don't see it on the website, like you might not see, this part, that part, that odd part, just give those guys a call and they can get you set up most likely. So uh, thanks for your time. Gonna set up these gears now and uh, get to some wheeling. Bye. tip for setting up. You want to put these in the same way that they came factory. That's how they were machined. So people will mark them. See like this one has a sideways F and a sideways F. That's good. See this one right here? We've got a vertical F. We got no F. But actually we do have an F. It's right up in here. So you want to make sure you put those back in and flip that and mark it. Otherwise stuff's not right. So you see this a lot in Dana actually. Instead of a crush sleeve right here, you see all these shims. So you want to make sure you take all that stuff out in the right order. But that is what puts your preload between these two bearings, is that shim step.
All right, so I've got this stuff set up how I like it. I've got a good pattern. I've got about six and a half, seven thou of backlash. I like it to be about six, but when I finally take off all these setup bearings and press the real ones on, that stuff seems to tighten up just a hair. So we'll get that all in and, and done. But before that, we wanna put the new inner axle seals in. They go here and here. So all this stuff needs to be out anyway. You don't want to forget that and have the thing under your truck already and realize you forgot to do your axle seal. So we'll get that done. And then very last, I like to take the, the pinion and set the preload and then put the, uh, put the pinion seal on and all that. And then we'll get it all buttoned up and uh, ready to roll. All right, now that that's all out of the way, we'll get the inner axle seals out. So we're gonna use a very high tech, very big, actually it's a patented process. You take one of these really fancy dueling design pull thingies here. And then we're gonna take that and get, that's an inner axle seal, and then that's the other one. Ready? All right, so now we got them out, but we got all kinds of crud in there. We gotta, we gotta get all that cleaned out before we swap the old one with these nice, pretty brand new ones. So get you, get yourself all cleaned up. Too greasy.
Well, all right, we got this thing all done up. Um, I just wanted to go over a few of the must-have tools that you're gonna need to do this. You need an inch-pound dial type torque wrench at the minimum. There's actually more expensive proper ways to do this, but this works pretty good unless you're you're building NASCARs or something. But uh, inch-pound dial, not click, dial and inch pound. So that's very important for setting the, the pinion preload. Just a regular foot-pound torque wrench. You can get them everywhere that sells tools. The bearing puller is really nice. These run like, I want to say like $400 for the whole kit. Maybe, they might be cheaper now, I don't know, I bought this a long time ago. But you can pick these up, or maybe you can borrow one from somebody. Or if you really just want to do it the one time and you don't plan on doing this again, you can get by with the, the clamshell ones and pull them off. You just have a more chance of ruining your bearing. Where this thing can take a good bearing on and off a hundred times and it's perfectly fine bearing still. So that's why these are nice. And then you're going to need a uh, dial indicator. I really like the, the digital one. It's just easier to read when you get down to it. And a magnetic base. So that helps you read the backlash. Everything else is pretty much uh, hand tools or comes in the master install kit with the shims and all that. But, um, you know, like a, a kit for like races, for beating all the races in would be really nice if you were doing this all the time. As you saw, I just kind of used like sockets and, and tubing and stuff like that. Um, so you can buy everything and spend a fortune and do it or, you know, I'm using pretty minimal tools, you know, I got probably $500 into all my fancy tools to do all this stuff. So uh, hopefully this helps some people and uh, get you guys doing your own gears, maybe save a little money. And uh, I like I like deep gears, man. 456 is right here. That's going to pep this thing up from the 355s or something that was in it before. So I love gear. So hope you guys enjoyed the, the tutorial there. and. Uh, Hope you guys can get out wheel and have some fun. Later.